Hello, and welcome to the Matt Made Podcast. I am your host, Kenny Kim, and this is the first podcast where we're actually on the mats telling stories of how jiu-jitsu has changed people's lives on and off the mats. Before we jump into today's episode, I want to tell you about the folks who make this actually happen. Our sponsors, Fuji Mats, the best mats on the planet. This whole place was built on the mats, and these are the mats I have in my gym, and they are the temper-peating mattresses of mats. You feel like you're rolling on cloud nine. Fuji Mats has been a huge supporter of Matt Made, and we are so proud to have Matt Made's name partnered with the best mats, Fuji Mats. Check out their website and use the coupon code MATMADE for 10% off everything, including their home training mats, keys, rash guard, any other jujitsu gear you need. And also my favorite recovery drink, Hoist. Hoist is an IV level hydration that actually tastes good. After you train, you need to put some fuel back in your body. And Hoist is the best recovery drink on the planet. They are proud sponsors of the US military. You can pick them up online, Food Lion, Winn-Dixie, Walmart, or even better, get your gym to start carrying Hoist. Thank you so much to Hoist for being a supporter of Matt Made Mission. We'll be talking a little more about them later on in the show. Today, the very first guest on the Matt Made podcast is none other than the man, the legend, Ronaldo Jacare Souza. Jacare was a multiple time world champion in color belt before becoming a two time black belt world champion, ADCC champion, CBJJ World Cup champion, Brazilian national champion, European champion, and the list goes on. Jacare then chose a transition to MMA where he became strike force middleweight champion and then had an incredible successful career in the UFC from 2013 to 2021. And today, Jacare is going to tell us his story. And I'm super excited because there's not a lot of interviews out there online with him. And he's one of the greatest of all times. So I am incredibly honored to have him here on the show with us today. Now, let's roll. Welcome to the show, Ronaldo. Thank you. I'm glad to, to be here. Um, so what do you think about Atlanta so far? I know we just flew in. <laughs> I, I asked you, I said, hey, do you have a coat? Because I know I got kind of cold here, but you feel all right? Yeah, it was cold, but uh, right now it's good. No, it's great. The, 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 the weather is, is amazing right now. It warmed up a little bit. Yes. A little bit of a coffee, too. You yeah, know? we need coffee. Without coffee, I can... <laughs> you can't function can without coffee? Yes. <laughs> How about... Uh, what did you think about the breakfast? I know we, we took you to the first ever Chick-fil-A, which is here in Atlanta. It's called the Dwarf House. Um, it was established in 1946. Yeah. 46. Oh, a little, little more backstory, Reggie. It it used to not. They used to not sell chicken sandwiches. Yeah. So that the first ever Chick Fil A was True Kathy. He started it in Hapeville, and it was called the Dwarf Grill because he just had one little grill and four or five seats. That's all he had. But he had all the Ford plant across the street and the Delta plant. So all those guys would be coming over, you know, eating with him, and he was cooking there for them for twenty years. Before he made the chicken sandwich. So it really wasn't a chicken sandwich. It wasn't at that time. No, but it was like, man, that was, that was cool because when you're doing the right thing for that long and then 20 years later, you discover your thing. And then, isn't that crazy? Now, how many stores does he have now? How many restaurants? Yeah. That's, it's a privately held company, but I think I they're like, I mean, 20, 30 billion dollars, something oh, crazy. The family all owns it. Well, you know, listen, black belt standards, as we say about, you know, in Matt made, you know, you have quality food, you take care of your people. Yeah. Take care of your customers. I mean, there's no recipe like that, you know? Their whole, Chick-fil-A's whole thing is uh, people over profits. Are you sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> they do both, but they put the people first. <laughs> because every time I go to Chick-fil-A, my wallet says different. Hey, they put their people first. <laughs> and then profits just happen to happen. But it was good, right? It was good. Yeah, it, it was, was great. Good. Uh, the, the, break, the break break was great. I had a great time there. First about time the history is amazing. Yeah, you know, if, yeah, you, if, yeah. you, if you if you don't give up, you'll be a champ. You know, if you do everything right and never never quit, never give up, uh, you'll be a champ. Sure. Yeah. Well, you can say that because you're the champ. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right? Thank you. Thank you. I, I mean, try. not once, but multiple. Not only in uh, you know the gi Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but in ADCC no gi, and of course in in the highest level of uh, MMA, like. What uh, let's let's just start from the beginning. Like I have well, my first question is okay. So how does being jujitsu world champion, no gi champion, strike force champion, how does that compare with being the first guest on the world's greatest podcast here today? 
<laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. When, I, when I win the competition, I'm glad. I'm, and I'm glad to be here with you guys. Uh, it's amazing for me. It's a, such an amazing experience, you know. The, you guys trust me because uh, my English is not the best, but I, I can come and talk with you, talk about my history. And you guys help me a lot, you know. And, well, I'm, uh, I'm, you, and I'm glad to be here. Well, it's, 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 you know, it's an honor for us to actually host you here, especially for the first, very first episode. And we're on the mats, Yo, literally I, on the mats. I showed you yes, earlier. Yes, yes. Like, I know you guys can't see, but we're standing on the mats. You'll see in the intro. It's incredible. Fuji mats. I know my, I just redid my entire gym with Fuji mats. I know they just did a, a yes, little story my, on the yeah, Fuji gym. My, my Fuji school mats, too. The best mats out there. Greatest, far. greatest mats on the planet. Yes. And, and now Jimmy the Pedro. Podcast on the mat. Right. On the mat. Jimmy Pedro. Thank, thank you, you, man. Thank you. Seriously. You did an amazing, you did an amazing job. Yeah. Yeah. My, my school is beautiful oh, yeah. right now. I was there. Yeah. Incredible. Everybody yeah. loved my school. Right. And I'm glad to work with Jimmy. Yeah. He's a, he's a terrific guy. Doesn't yeah. say a lot, but he's a man of his words. <laughs> Jimmy. Giving you a thumbs up. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, my camera. There. that's my camera. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're over there. But uh, yeah, I mean, like, so this is the first podcast we're actually on the mats. You know, like, I've seen a lot of jujitsu podcasts, you know, where they talk about jujitsu and this and that. But first one on the mats. And pretty soon, probably the next couple of episodes, we're going to actually have a light over here. And we'll be able to actually just go over there to the mats and go over some techniques like in the middle of uh the podcast we feel like hey i want to see this or i want to feel this hey we're going right over here right so uh, i think it's it's a great idea you know right? uh bring the, the 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 fighters and talk about techniques right. and show techniques right. you show the, the some of the different de details right it's exactly. amazing i can come yeah <laughs> and this makes people feel comfortable you know why because we're used to being on the mats right yes and so it's like you come to the podcast you know like oh wow i'm a little nervous <laughs> i was shy, nervous. right right but it's yeah. like oh you saw the match you're like oh look at the mats right like, i take off my shoes yeah and you take your shoes like you come used to, to be fun mats, right? <laughs> so it, I, I think it's a, it's a it's something great. I, I, I feel like uh, this is going to hold some weight on us, and uh, we're going to make it the best, right? Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Um, so first of all, I, I've been wanting to ask this for a long time. Obviously, the – well, it's obvious to me, but Jacare. Jacare means alligator in yes. Portuguese. How did you get that nickname? Uh, and how did it stick around like that? Yeah, uh, I was live inside the, the, the Jiu-Jitsu school. Okay. In Manaus, Amazon. Okay. Is that where so you're from? Brazil. Manaus. No, I was living in uh, Espiritu Santo, Brazil. I have to leave from my city, from my own city, because the violence, criminals, uh, you know? Yeah, I think and we And I almost died. They killed it. They shoot my, 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 my best friend. Oh, man. In the mountains, you know, I have to leave from my city. When I was 15 years old. I was in Manaus in December '95. Okay, and then that day I was 15 year old. Okay, I I I I, I did my birthday inside the plane. Oh, really? <laughs> my birthday was inside the plane, in the plane. 15 year old, and I'm starting when I was 17 year old, and I, in the second week I moved for my to live inside the school, okay. the Jiu-Jitsu school, and the 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 symbol of the school was a. a a ja, alligator, jacaré. Uh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, and then, and I, I train every every day, every single train. I try to learn the the uh, best that I can, you know. And I was in sometime later, I was very strong, uh -huh. you know. I hold the gi, and I. Oh, no, and, I felt that yes. last time we we were just when training I, techniques. Yeah, yes, I, right now I'm not strong like oh, before. I second, but I, 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 I sometimes I. I, how to say I I break the grip? I break the uh, the, the geese. Oh yeah, you yeah. ripped ripped the geese. Yeah, huh? ripped the geese. And the guy gave me a nickname the uh, the jacare. Jacare, the alligator. That's wow. why because when I hold, like it's biting and yes, wow, it's hard to to break. <laughs> well, I don't even think most people know your name other than jacare. You know what I mean? Okay. They say, oh, is, this is Ronaldo. It's like who's that? Oh, yeah, Jacare. like oh. me. When the guy say Ronaldo, you say who got, who, who, who's Ronaldo? <laughs> I know his own name. I'm Jacare. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's two Jacares. This is Jacare Souza, and then of course the the founder of uh, Alliance, yes, Homero Jacare. Homero Jacare. Yes, Capocanti. Yes, the older Jacare. 
So tell us, what was it like growing up in, in Brazil? I I came from a very poor city and Brazil Southwest, you know. Uh, I was living the, the the in a small house with my 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 family, my father and my mom. Um but I had a great time when I was a kid, you know, play everywhere, go everywhere, and some yeah, I was very free, you know? Yeah. I don't have bad, bad bad memories about my my when I was a kid. I just great memories. That's great. But yeah. you know, maybe that's that just shows you sometimes it's not even like only where you grow up. You can be in a very affluent area when you grow up, like here, especially in the States. But it doesn't always mean that you're gonna turn out great either. I've seen some kids that were brought up in a very affluent areas that turned out to be very bad people too, you know? But like like you just said, you're in a very poor, very very, you know, very poor right, in a neighborhood, but only memories you have is good memories of you playing and having a great time. So I think it's just yes. you know. very poor city. I go to the river with my friends, uh, to the ocean with my friends. When I was a kid, young. 12, 11. Oh, yeah, uh-huh. I go everywhere. You no. Know? I play around. Freedom, man. Freedom. I was freedom. Yeah. Like, yes. We didn't have phones. <laughs> no, <laughs> never. 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 And I never had a video game. Never. When I was a kid. Yeah, I don't know where's video, video yeah. game. It's out no. in nature. Very nature. No. Now, word, nature. On the, word on the street, though, is maybe you were a, played some soccer? Maybe yes, a, a lot. Oh, I mean, come oh, on, he's the, Brazilian. Come all on. All the kids play soccer, no? <laughs> you don't pr- play soccer in Brazil, you're like the outcast. You're like, what? Yeah. You're Brazilian? <laughs> uh, yes, 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 yes. Every, everybody played. I was very good goalkeeper. Goalkeeper? Goalkeeper. I was very good. Mm. You ever think about what your life would have been like differently if you would have pursued soccer or versus jiu-jitsu? Or anything else? No, and I never play any sport. The soccer is, is 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 like a natural for us. No, we don't don't watch soccer like a sport. It's like a have fun. No? It's a lifestyle. Stay with the lifestyle. Stay yeah. with the friends. No, uh, hang out with the friends. Uh, but uh, I started jiu-jitsu when I was seventeen. When I moved, when I when I moved to Manaus, Amazon. No, yeah, because my 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 old brother started jiu-jitsu. Uh, and um, he don't he pay for the school, but he he, he, he hurts himself. You no, know? I take his his own gear and go to the train. So when did judo come into play? So you started jujitsu first, because I know a lot of I've got friends that you know trained in Brazil. Obviously, judo used to be uh, really big in Brazil before jujitsu was the, ever big. The, so did judo come before jujitsu, or was it jujitsu and then judo, or how did that? Oh, my kid's not a, it was not a black belt, or it was not a judo black belt, it was not a jiu-jitsu black belt, no? But they teach a lot of uh, techniques on the floor, mm-hmm. d- ground, no? And and uh, we train a lot, and I was good. And one day when the guy, the, I think he, he was, he was uh, purple, he went to my school to mm-hmm. train with me, I was with my 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 yellow orange belt, judo orange belt, and I t- and I submit this guy, those guy, <laughs> I submit and I make it, the guy tap, uh-huh. and the guy back back for his school. Say, he said for his coach, hey, they have a guy in the, in the jiu-jitsu school. He's good man. If you put him to fight and you don't uh, for in jiu-jitsu, he will be a champ. Mm. And the guy, the, his name is Orle Lobat. He's a he's a he's a president. He's a president. How's president? President, president, president of yeah. the Confederation, the Amazon Confederation, uh-huh. and they put me to fight in his school, and I go there and to beat everybody. I feel like I'm like watching a movie, like you know, yeah. What I mean? like I, a I, I, I right go now. there and submit, submitted everybody in, in blue belt. Oh wow! And sometime later, guy, who this guy? Who this guy? to come here and submit everybody. I sometime ladies, Oswaldo Alves give a black belt for my coach. My coach gave a black belt for me. But natural, and judo. no. And my, jiu-jitsu. My coach is, is judo black belt. Okay, He's okay. very good judo black oh, okay. belt. And by they teach me ju- jiu-jitsu too. We turn uh, sometimes we turn more jiu-jitsu than judo. Uh, I and, uh, and, and I took uh, I took judo gra- graduation. 
white, yellow, orange, uh, blue, blue, green, purple, brown, and black. Uh -huh. You have to... And sometime later, you start to compete jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu jiu was big in Manaus. Manaus. Mm -hmm. like, when I come for a fight... I feel like there's a lot of great fighters, even MMA <sighs> fighters, that come out of Manaus. Maybe it's just the environment of how they grew up, but, man, some very tough guys. Yes, yes. And I, I moved... For, I, I talked to my coach. I need to fight jiu-jitsu right now because I came for jiu-jitsu like a 11, 12 fight. I came for judo one, two fights. And I was not happy mm. with this. You wanted to fight more? Yes, yes. <laughs> and because I like, because I, the, the crowd, the crowd is crazy. My the crowd, the, yeah. The crowd the crowd. Crazy. Well, actually, Brazilian crowd is a different kind of crowd. Yeah. Like, you compete here. Oh, yeah, it's like, hey, yeah, go, Jimmy. Yes, good job. Oh, yeah. And Brazil, it's like a soccer game. The entire stand is, like, banging on the, you know what I mean? The in bleachers. My, yes. In Manaus, the, 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 the place when we fought, is too small. Mm. They, they come a lot of people, more than 1,000 fighters. Oh, wow. In a little small city like that. Yeah. The small place, more than 1,000 fighters come there to fight. Yeah. It's crazy. So when did you make the transition from jiu-jitsu to MMA? Oh, uh, after I won the, 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 the when I was poor, uh, brown, you know, I, I talked to my coach, I want to fight, I want to fight my mate. The point is, I, I meet the girl and uh, for, I, need, I need marry, I need kids, I need to pay for, for my account. I, I just have no money. For, right, right. And I think about, oh, especially not back then. Yes. I can't, I can't, I can't fight my mate. Yes, I will fight. I can still fight. I can get money, and I can, I can take care of my family. So, did you <laughs> uh, uh, have your first fights in Brazil or here? Yeah, my first fight in Brazil was a uh, uh, Patino Macaco. I lost. I lost. He knocked me out. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. He knocked me out. He's a great fighter, you know. Um, I have no problem to talk about it. For me, it's normal. Sure. Every time yeah. when you come to fight. If, when you come to fight against the the, the 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 fight, they have a lot of fight in your in is it, it was my first fight, no, and I lost. It. I did everything wrong, but for me it was a great experience, you know. And I talked to him. He's he's my friend right now, no. He's a Charlie Oliveira coach. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, Patino, George Patino Macaco, and I have a lot of respect to him, you know. But that's, I think that's the beauty of martial arts, especially yes, jiu -jitsu. Yes, amazing. Guys can fight, like literally fight and yeah. submit each other and go after it, but afterwards be friends again, you know? I have, I have no, no problem. problem. No, yeah. for me, I have no, no problem. Animosity. If I win or loss, I have no problem. Like Musashi, he beat me in Japan. I come, I come, I come to fight him against him in UFC and submit him. And uh, we, he's still my fan. I love him, you know? Yeah. For me, he's, he's, he's one of the greatest MMA fighters in the world ever. So you get knocked out, very first MMA fight. Yes. And you still want to go back and fight. Whoa, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how you determine if he's a fighter or not. Like, you get knocked out on your first match, you're like, maybe this isn't for me. Yeah. Then, I love uh, it. I love it. So second fight. Brazil? Ah, second fight in Brazil, too. Django, I'm still submit the guys. I'm still do right things, you know? And uh, it's good. And then when did you have your first fight here in the States? How many fights did you have in Brazil? Uh, before? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Too much to push yeah, to the yeah, head, yeah. man. <laughs> I, I think I, I, I came to fight here in the US in the Grace, in the Grace, in the Grace fight. Grace made a ton of, uh, fight here in the cage, and I came to fight, and I submit the guy, submit my, my, my opponent. So, in your MMA fights, do you do, do you use your advantages? Like, do you use jujitsu? Do you did you or did you change things like, okay, I'm going to learn how to strike. I want to learn how to box. And did you try to knock the guy out? I mean, what was your strategy? Uh, yes. I, in the final of the, my career, I was tired mentally, you know? And I just, I, I, I don't like to lose, you know? I lost many times, but I was very tired in my head. I had some, uh, some problems, you know? I, I have to fight the fight that I, that I, I think the, I had to say no when I come to fight. Anyways, yeah. Yes, I did. I I did a lot of mistake, but for me it was great. No, I have no problem 
should talk about it. For well, me, it's, it's past. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's the past, but that's why I think there's so much respect for you too, because you have no problems, you know, admitting that, hey, listen, I, I mean, I made some mistakes and this is what happened, but, you know, you're still one of the greatest that did it. Thank you. Especially in, 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 in the eyes of uh, uh, the jiu-jitsu guys, because you were at the highest level in jiu-jitsu, only competing tw uh, two years as a black belt, submitting and beating the top level guys out there. I mean, it's still to this day considered the GOAT of jiu-jitsu, right? Which you are obviously one. Uh, I think that puts a lot of respect behind your name. And I think that's why, you know, the, the seminar we're hosting tonight, I think about 40% of the participants are black belts. Wow. Like people are signing up. I'm like, this is another black belt. It's another black belt. I'm like, and of course we have some white belts, of course, because they were like, man, yes. And then, we have very few color belts. They're like, ah, but they, you know, you know what they're thinking. Oh, I already know everything, you know. These are the typical purple belts, you know. <laughs> I, so. I was like the, those guys, you know. I have, I have, I have, I have to, I, I respect everybody, you know. Sure. Yeah, I respect yeah. everybody. And uh, I think right now this jiu-jitsu is strange, it's changed, you know. Oh, it's definitely jiu -jitsu changed. Yeah. Jiu-jitsu changed a lot. It's, it's very fun to watch. I love it. I love fun for it. us because we understand it. Yes, but, I love it. I love it. I think there's th those news news techniques was amazing. It it's, is no, it's amazing. You know, like a beating bull. Yeah. Beating bull is a real deal. I love it. This and, happened in but, MMA too. Yeah, people yes. pulling, pulling it off. Yeah, but right now when I watch it, like a Dalpra, uh -huh. this looks like a TDD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this yeah. is a white TDD yeah, fight. Yeah, you know, yeah. Jiu-Jitsu is still still new, new, but uh, it's still old. But it's still new. It's new. <laughs> like, I, I don't mind the modern techniques. I do them, obviously. They're great. Sport Jiu Jitsu. Um, but w a lot of people have told me, guys who are coming tonight to the seminar, said, I started Jiu Jitsu because I watched Zachary's highlights. And what that means is the way you fought, the way you went out on the mat, and the way you manhandle people, the way you aggressively attacked them, because that's what Jiu Jitsu was like. It was supposed to be like, look, we're not trying to win by this advantage or a point. You know what I mean? You're going out there to finish these guys yes. like, no matter what. And I think that's the style that these guys are still rooting for. I think deep inside, people want to do that. They just don't have the confidence, I don't think, to do that. I mean, the levels are so high, it's hard to do that. But you did it even at the highest level. So I don't think it's an excuse, right? Um, but that's why people still respect and like want to see and want to be by your side and learn from you because of, of of your style now the modern styles i think it's great but it's, it's i mean look it, it's very technical like there's certain things that are just like wow sometimes it takes me a long time especially when the younger guys are showing me to you know comprehend however like it's not the little techniques like like you were showing me you know grabbing this instead of that i mean the, there's subtle differences and i can't say new jiu-jitsu is better than old jiu-jitsu or old no, jiu-jitsu is better no. it's none of that. it's to me no. it's all jiu-jitsu same thing as gi like no, me like me to me it's all the same like yes, you know what i mean yes, i i, yes, I, I yes. see the essence and i see the beauty in what jiu-jitsu offers and so uh for you know all of our viewers that are always like oh gi jiu-jitsu no gi jiu-jitsu i mean look jiu-jitsu jiu -jitsu. take it for what it is Whatever it is that you enjoy, just do it, right? Yes, yes, that's the point. For me, it's just saying, the world, the roads always change. So I saw the guys with the, the skinny pants, like <laughs> tie, do squats. You know, I saw the the, 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 the the young kids fight against the old old the the young, the young guys fight fight against the the big guys and did something great. You know, the jiu jitsu change, uh, but it's still the same too. Yeah. You know, we have so. to know the techniques. We have to respect the, the history. We have to respect yes. the, all the techniques because right now, I like to to choose me out, me out brothers. Yeah, I yeah, love yeah. The, those guys. I love Mendes. Mendes is yeah, Dalpra. Dalpra, I love. But it, for me, Dalpra looks like TDD fight. You yeah. No. Know? <laughs> Do you think that like your aggressive style was one of the reasons why you transitioned so well from jujitsu to MMA? I think because I had no, I had no fear. That's the point. I had no fear to try. Like sometimes I, I fight against the, 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 the world class a black belt. I came past his guard, man. I came past his guard. I came past his guard. I when I what the the, the, the small space, I go to fly triangle. So okay, let me let me let me. <laughs> so you said you had no and fear, I'm, but I think you did have fear. You didn't have fear of trying. 
right? Yes. As we all have fear. You said it earlier too. It's like, oh man, I was nervous fighting this guy. I was scared to fight this guy. But I think what you meant was you don't, you didn't have any fear of trying to go no, out there no, and prove no. yourself. I, I just yeah. trust in, trust in my game, and trust in my technique, and then some. And uh, sometimes I, I come, I was fight against the guy. I say, man, that guy was black belt. I saw the guy fighting black belt. This guy is so strong. When the guy put guard, the pass, pass. Even fin- to be the guy like a kid, no, like a white belt. <laughs> but that's what yeah, the guy I, was I, saying when he was watching. He's like, "Oh my god, this guy's so strong." And I, well, I, I was, su- I was surprised, but I, I think because I tried, I don't know. Was there any anybody that you fought, either MMA or jujitsu, that you were scared to go after? I'm scared to fight everybody. No. <laughs> it says he's scared to fight everybody, and then just beat the kid. Yeah, but I don't care. Just go, man. Everybody have fear. No, I'm 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 scared because I respect the guy, I respect the techniques, you know. But I I don't care. I was scared that go. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess that's the difference. People, some people are scared and they let that hold them back. Yeah. Whether yeah. it's well, it's the same thing. Whether it's in the, on the mats, in the ring, or in the cage, I guess they can translate into real life. You know, like people yeah. have goals and people have things they want to do, but they have the fear of. You know what people are going to say. Fear of themselves. Fear of failure. Uh, and that kind of hinders and holds them back. You know, from going forward. I, I love that mentality. Like, how do you how do you take that out of your head and teach it to your kids and your students now at your academy? Yes, right, or right do now, you? Yeah, right now, <laughs> no. Teach kids is amazing. It's different. By the way, let's plug your uh, 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 school in. So, Zachary has been open in, in Ocoee, uh, California, Ocoee, Florida, which yes. is right next to Orlando. He's been there, what, four or five months now? Yes, four, four, four months. Four months. Okay. Beautiful Academy. I was there filming uh, a couple of months ago. So if you guys are ever there, like for Pans, Pans is in Orlando, Kissimmee. So stop by, say hello. And he'll, he'll welcome you. Just give you a little bit of a choke. That's it. You know, nothing, nothing too crazy. <laughs> no, don't want to be hard. <laughs> but stop by. Beautiful school. But anyways, he's been there for about four months. He's got like 80, 90 kids training there, a bunch of adults. I mean, like clean, clean school. Um, which Fuji, we'll, Fuji mats. Yeah, Fuji mats. Uh, <laughs> thanks to me, Pedro. Which we'll talk about a little bit later. I want to talk about Zachary transitioning from a kid to uh, a high-level athlete to an MMA to a family man to a businessman and now, you know, like a coach slash, you know, uh, an instructor. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But make sure you guys stop by. But anyways, uh, oh, thank you, thank you. So, uh, how do you teach the kids? How do you take t- give them that no fear, or you have fear, but I, I'm willing, I'm gonna overcome fear mentality. Oh, every kid is different. They they work different. You know, you need the kids need trust in you first. Mm-hmm. When the, trust, the kids yep. trust in you, you can do. Well, we can do uh, the, some techniques for the kids. You can talk with the kids. Some sometimes the kids don't respect the mom, don't respect the mat, mm-hmm. because in my school, you need he need to respect the mat. Nobody foot outside the mat. You know about the coach, about the match when when he inside, about the mat when he leave, mm-hmm. and when they teach when they, when we teach respect the kids, uh, he he change. The kids oh, yeah. change they and change, yes. start to respect the mom. We have mm-hmm. three rules in my school. Treat the people the way we want to be treated. The second one, don't treat people you the way you don't want to be, be treated. treated. Uh-huh. Yes. The third, the third is never quit, never give up. And we teach for the kids. That's three rules to life. That's three rules. Yes. You know, we teach for the kids, you know. That's amazing, though. I mean, just the fact that you have, like, those rules set in place and you didn't say, I teach them by showing them this or that. You said, I show them, you know, how to respect. First. Yeah, I, I saw, I said for the kid, man, that mat, that mat has to be clean. Clean, because you want to put your face, face on, on the, this mat. Right, right. You know, you need to respect this mat. Because you, you come here, your kids are going to help you. You help your friends. Mm-hmm. And, and you help me, I help you. We, we come here to help each other. And I saw the kids change, you know. The kids had no confidence. They still with confidence, you know. The kids, uh, psychology, go to psychology, no anymore. No go. The therapy, huh? Yeah. The therapy, don't go to the therapy anymore, you know. I saw the kids bad every day, you know. 
improving. And they, and improve. So look, you're all not only a jujitsu coach, but you you're you're a life coach. You know what I mean? I think that's why there's a high that people hold uh, martial arts and jujitsu instructors in a high pedestal because of the influences they have on not only on children but even you know. And I'm not saying all instructors are the same. Some are great athletes, but some are terrible at being a great influencer and leader you know what i mean and some are even beyond that where they're 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 terrible human beings they shouldn't be in a place where they are right but uh you know just you know listening to what you're talking about now it just reaffirms why you are where you are and i love su- those kids man yeah and success you've <laughs> had and i just i believe in the next year two years your 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 school's gonna be you know by far one of the best in Orlando and you're going to be very successful at, you know, not only running the gym, but you're going to be one of the best instructors. So you're going to be, you're going to be the best fighter, world <laughs> champion, but you're going to be, man, you're going to make me cry. Stop, <laughs> stop, stop, stop that shit, man. I'm serious. <laughs> man. This isn't just for, yeah, I'm serious. I mean, it's, it's, I think, um, it's very well deserved too, because, um, people that come from, you know, not having anything that, that they had to work, hard their entire life and respect people and to teach that same principle i mean uh, those are the people that need to be recognized and you know be on that high pedestal yes uh i think in everything when i when i build my school no no, i don't want to say oh right now i'm gonna build my school no it was four years ago you know when i came to orlando six years i just think about it Mm -hmm. and i almost four years i'm work my school yeah, right okay. now it's ready, but it's, I work for a long time to try make everything perfect. Yeah. So what what did you do for six years? I mean, obviously you spent like four years preparing your school, but for six years were you still fighting? Yeah, I was or? fight. I was okay. fighting UFC. I have a good. I have a great contract. They pay me very good. And Wait, I fought, what, what team were you uh, training with at the time? I was training in a Fusion XL in, uh, in Orlando. Okay. And uh, but uh, also I brought my uh, brought my uh, my coach from Brazil, Jordão Stark, and all, all the friends to help me. Okay. Okay. Well, see, see, look at that. That's loyalty right there. He brings his people from Brazil. You know. Yes. Seriously. I mean, not only for his training camp, but uh, he's helping them. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. Financially, making names. Yes. Oh, well, that's. That's why you are where you are, like I said. Let's talk about some of the specific fights that you had. Um, any of those stand out to you as uh, your your greatest fight? Jiu-Jitsu or MMA? Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, the, my, my my fight against Roger Gracie was uh, the yeah. great, the well, greatest. 2004? Yeah. Can we pull that up? Yeah, absolutely. You're going to be able to see it on that screen right yeah, there. So yeah. was this the World Championships? Yes, the open class. Open class, world championships. This is you can't I, get better than this is. So this is the best of the best. Yes, gi, gi or no gi? Nah, no gi. He he beat me in the in the final. In no, no gi. in the ADCC. Okay, no, but I'm saying for this fight. This is a gi. Gi. Okay. Gi. 2004. And I watched. And I watched 2005 too. Okay, you won 2005. But so 2004, that fight with Roger Gracie. Yeah, that's. I think that because was, he was regarded the best then, and he's still regarded as one of the goats of of, of the yes. sport, right? Uh, so this is the open class. So that means no weight class for yeah. all our viewers, especially if you are new to jujitsu or it's, are not a participant or an athlete. So open class means there's no weight class. This is just open. You could be 150 pounds going against somebody that's 300 pounds at the black belt level at adults, which is the the uh, I don't know. I guess you can say the Olympics of the gold medal. I mean, this is the best you're gonna get, right? And so this is the match. And where was it? Was this in Rio? Was this in Tijuca? Yes, tennis club. Yeah, yeah. I actually me. competed over there. Yeah. I was like, you know what? Before my you know uh, competition career is over, I gotta at least compete there once. And uh, I was there in twenty. Maybe 18. Uh, Tijuca was amazing. Oh, I mean, just it was crazy because <laughs> they were like, well, if you want to register, uh, I registered and you had to bring a bag of rice. You had to bring a bag of rice as a donation. Seriously, because, you know, and then they take it and then they give it away in, in, in the neighborhood. Right. Uh, but yeah, so this is the match. Uh, you can watch it right there. I'm going to watch it right here. Uh, this is the match. So you're in the white or blue? 
I don't want to watch this one. <laughs> is this the one you? Is this the one with your arm get broken? Yes. All right, hold on. Before we go, oh, hold on. Yeah, hold on. no, can go, can go, can watch. Okay, 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 okay. okay. this one. But I, I, I like it because it's, it's a part of the history. Yeah. Nobody did it, you know. Yeah, but I, nobody beat Hardy Grace like that. Nobody did it like a like that. Fight with a broken arm. arm. How many times have you broken your arm in a fight? Twice. 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 Okay. Jiu-jitsu or both jiu-jitsu? Or? Jiu-jitsu MMA. MMA. Did last year, right? Yeah, that's two, my last fight in MMA. Okay. And how's your arm now? Not great. I great. don't find anything. Okay. All what right, what so, point do you want to jump to? Um, I think the final. This is the final, right? No, I think it was the London fight. Yeah. Oh, towards the end? In the end of the fight. No, I have, I have one, one, one arm right there. Yeah, yeah, let's go back. Go back to, let's go back to where... The yeah, that, that, that pause. That don't, don't, stop, stop, stop. Okay. That point was when he broke my arm... I get, I, I get up, uh-huh. I say, I want to put my arm in my pants. Uh-huh. I want to hold because it's straight. Uh-huh. When I move my body, I was scared because my, my arm like a... Like a was flopping around like flapping this? Flapping around. I'm Ugh. so scared about this. Like a, you take that t-shirt and mm. right that? like this. So like my rag. <laughs> After that, I hold my belt. my belt. I feel better. And so you fall with your hand in the yeah. belt like this. You feel better. <laughs> I feel better. And I try to put my arm in my arm back, not too much, no everything. I so pain. was it your elbow or your shoulder? My elbow. Your I try to put my elbow back. When I put, don't go, just just half. I start pain. <laughs> the pain started. Because I put my arm. Like, probably it, broke it, it worse than where it was. was. Like, uh, I, 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 I listen to the noise. But I uh, I don't put it back. Yeah, I start you, paying a lot. Yeah, you broke it again. Or you broke the <laughs> other piece that wasn't broke. <laughs> Did Hodger know your arm was broken? Yes. Oh, knows. Everybody, everybody, knows. everybody knows. Everybody, everybody knows. knows. What was the score? I was four points because I take his back. So you have, you're winning 4-0. Yeah. So he got an advantage for the arm. Yes. <laughs> but it's broken. Yeah, but the point is, I fought against him when I was brown belt. And I couldn't take his back because he have a good defense. And I I back to my house, Amazon, and think about it for the whole years. And I cre- and I created the 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 uh, the, 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 the grip to uh-huh. take the backs. Oh wow! And I and then when, when he turned the back, I I put the hooks. Oh, uh, got the four points. And that technique give me uh, two world titles. Open class against that, for a year. He's like, I'm gonna get I'm gonna train that for a year. <laughs> yeah, uh, one year, and I, I took the Hodges Grace back, and I took Fernando Terere back Terere with too. the same grip. Look, guys, Hodges Gracie, the best. Fernando Terere is responsible for making Andre Gavon all the best champions out there. Yes, unfortunately, Terere can't compete or. Well, he's older now, but he he wasn't able to compete here in the States with some legal trouble or whatnot. But Teddy Day is, again, one of those guys that are held high in the pedals of the jiu-jitsu world, you know, especially being, I would love to, you know, if we can never, maybe go to Brazil and uh, interview him there. But, you know, from, from again, being from the uh, favelas and, you know, whatnot, his jiu-jitsu and just being a nice guy, right? But Zachary basically took both, I mean, like, look, two of the best guys out there. Not two of the the best guys. It's incredible. I got to learn that grip. <laughs> so come to the seminar tonight. Come to the seminar yes, at six o'clock. Yes, yeah. <laughs> six o'clock, guys. Six o'clock. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right, so Jesus. let's watch this clip here. Uh, it's... All right, we're about four minutes in here. No, his arms already. Yeah, here, so let's go, yeah. go back. Go back. Look my arm. Yeah, you see. No. Look, look at uh, the paints. Uh huh. Man, so you fall for like four minutes. With a broken arm. Go back. Uh, oh, my arm, goodness. Right? Yeah. Probably, right this is it right here. This right is here. it right here. And the viewers will be able to see this clip. Uh, so he had you like in a high, high guard, like in a triangle kind of type. I watched for my friend to ask you how, how, how long, <laughs> how many is it? Look, look. I wa- when I watch him, he cut my arm say, how, long, just, how, how, how many times? Well, uh, he's on his head like he was fully extended. Look, man. Ah, oh, man. I put my arm in the floor right now. 
I think most people probably thought, okay, the match is over now. His arms broke. And this is a minute 40 into it. Yeah. And he goes for seven and a half minutes. Incredible. At that point, I, I run for the middle of the, the, the match because I was scared. They disqualified me. Oh, for yeah, and running. And I make the guys a lot of crowns, a lot for after that. Look at that. Imagine feeling that. Oh, my goodness. Imagine being Hodger and knowing that you just broke the guy's arm and you still lost. That's incredible. That's that's actually like one for the history books right here. Yeah. That's one for the history books. It's it's uh, purple, two open class world champ, brown belt, one open class, one one second place, one open class, and black belt, two open class world champions. <laughs> That's incredible. It's quite the resume. Yeah. What made you want to change in direction, move over here to the United States? Um, uh, my wife, my wife love it, love it. Uh, he he asked me to move. I love Brazil, no? but uh, I'm glad to move because he's, here is a very nice place to live with the family, you know? Right, right. And uh, I love, and uh, I'm very happy to be here and, and help the people, and people help me. Well, you know, this country is, uh, our country is very welcoming for, you know, immigrants that are hardworking and uh dedicated and especially you know raising a good family here and I'm, so i think you made the right choice uh um, yeah, yes especially be. for your children i think it'd be great for them you guys can always go back and visit you know that's probably going to be always your home away from home but you know i'm glad to have you guys here i'm, um, I'm not away from home that's my home right yeah <laughs> Like to see you as a father, like you know, when you said, uh, "Can I, I want to bring my son to this," I was like, "Yeah, man, that's great." Because as I said, like, like this morning, I was at my son's school. He won um, uh, student of the month. Oh my goodness, you know? it's amazing! So, right? First time kindergarten, you know, I was there. But like those times, that we'll never get back. You know, um, one of my one of my instructors actually text messaged me today. He was like, oh, "I was waiting on my daughter's cheerleading competition schedule." to determine if I can come to the seminar tonight. He was like, unfortunately, it's tonight. I can't come. I said, I said, listen, seminars will always come and go. You can always come back. But I said, your daughter's competition at this age, she may have another competition next year, but at your daughter's competition at this age is only going to be today. I said, you know the right thing. I said, jujitsu is always going to be here. Your daughter's n- never going to be the same age, you know, doing the same thing. Yes. So I said, enjoy it while you can, you know. And yes, uh, Reggie and I talk about it all the time. I'm, I'm, I, you know, sometimes I'm guilty of like putting work. I wouldn't just say work because to me, work is my family too, my students, and you know that's like my family. But sometimes I put a lot more effort into them than I do with my own family and my kid and stuff. So I've, I've, I've kind of rearranged. You know, my priorities, too, where, you know, I try to take some time and make sure I spend it with uh, uh, my family, you know, also. Oh, that's I think the it's point. so important, you know, and what we do. And Reggie over here, he's, he's the black belt. And he's actually like the grandmaster in heaven with children. I, I'm just like, a, I just got like a purple belt because I have one kid, right? Yeah. Three kids is like, you're, you know, black belt, you know, six kids. He's a... <laughs> Great. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a he's a wizard. He's a red belt. Red he's belt, a right? red belt. Yeah. Yeah. Kenny yeah. says I don't know how to pass. He the doesn't guard. know how to pass the guard. That's why he has. Six no, he don't pass the guard. He stay there. I make a, make he, a kids. Yeah. <laughs> he just stalls in the guard yeah, position. Man. He don't like to pass the guard, man. <laughs> I, I'm just a good guard passer. That's stay away from the guard, man. No more. Six. Six. Oh my goodness. Hey, but only 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 five pregnancies because the last one was twins. Yeah, I had twins. <laughs> After four, he was like, oh, one more. And they had yeah. twins. We had twins. Six. Two girls. I got four girls, two boys. I have two boys, man. That's I good. don't do anything <laughs> wrong. Man. No, that's good. <laughs> yeah, but I try to make a girl, but God don't give me a girl. Well, later you're going to thank yourself because, you know, nah, no, girls, no, are no. girls are so pretty when they're I wanted. I try. I try. I try. Uh, imagine when they're 16, 17. Oh, my God. And I, I have to kill someone. Yeah, makeup and then boyfriend. No, no, it's not cool, hard, man. No. Boys can be like, hey, you guys go do whatever, right? No, he not signed the contract to me. After 30 <laughs> years, you can go. After 30 years? Yeah, after 30 years. <laughs> you can, you I can wanna hold your hands. I put the, the, put the <laughs> fingerprints in the paper. Listen, you want a girl? I can show you. 
I know. I know how. I don't know how to do it. You know how to do. I know how to do no. it. I heard like <laughs> if you want to have a girl, you gotta bend your like left no, pinky no, toe. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Try but you don't have you wouldn't have anything to worry about, man. There wouldn't be a a, a boy in this world that would mess with your daughter. Yeah, They'd be yeah. scared to death. Yeah, man. Yeah, Jacare. I try, I try, girl, man. And you know what? We, we're blessed with uh, what we're blessed with. You know, some people can't even have kids. You know. Yeah. Yes. So we always, you know, we always look at what we want rather than what we were blessed with, you know, whether it's uh, our uh, relationship financially, whatever it may be. You know, sometimes we, we, we take for granted what we have, you know, like sometimes mm-hmm. you look, you know, I wish I had this. I wish I had that. And then I look at somebody else that's more, you know, unfortunate, you know, maybe, you know, they're missing an arm or they're, they can't hear, they can't see. And then you're like, wow, how lucky am I to have all my senses and have all, you know, everything. Uh, so sometimes it's just, you know, we're very lucky. We just don't know it. I'm lucky. Oh, we're, we're all lucky. Yeah. I'm lucky because I'm sitting here, you know, with one of the best in the world. You get to enjoy it. And Jacare. Huh? And Jacare. And, and Jacare. And Jacare. Yeah. He's, he's and Jacare. Here. <laughs> right now, he's the man. I'm the second place. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. the third place. Yeah, yeah, I'm the white belt. Let me go. Yeah. Let me go we're talking about up. feeds right now. He's the man. He's the man. He's the man. He's the man. <laughs> uh, I think we have some questions. So you check this out. Yeah. So Reggie has some questions. Look, this is AI, artificial intelligence. You basically ask it to do whatever, and it does it. I'm not too smart. <laughs> no, but you don't. <laughs> have to, you don't have to. We basically asked. <laughs> All right. So, so do you have you heard of AI, artificial intelligence? No. Okay. So this is a this is a new thing just came out in November called Chat GPT. Oh, All right. It's, a com- it's it's a computer. They fed it some information. You can have a conversation with it. Yeah. It'll write for you. If I don't understand. Okay. Just wait. No, you'll understand. Just wait. Okay. I'm sure it's smart enough to speak Portuguese too. Oh, yeah, yeah. We can translate everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Right, like we're going to log in here. I don't like that. <laughs> I'm going to show you a couple things. My here, wife okay. all the time, let like, me like, uh, QI test, QI test. Like, no, I'm scared. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go on Chat GPT right here. Right, look over this. here, look, look and right I'm here. gonna ask it. I'm gonna tell it that I have Jacques Ray on a podcast. What questions should I ask him? Okay, and it'll ask you certain questions, and we'll show this uh, on screen. Number, as let's you guys pick are number watching. seven. Can you speak about any specific fighters that you admire or have enjoyed competing, competing against? Anybody that you had fun competing against or that you look up to? Yes, I or both. I when I competed against Hoji, I uh, I had fun because I knew it. He's the best. I knew it. He's the real deal. And and he had the yes, like Gracie last name. Yes, and he I in for me I think I, I think about it. I think about it. He had everything. He had a good family. Have a bad to sleep. I and I have only Jujits. I have to win this fight, and I will win, and I go to win. Mm-hmm. And I put this in my mind. That's why he broke my arm and still fight. Because when when he left for the competition, I think he will back to his home, eat a good food, stay with the, her, her his, his uh, mom, his family, and now and I, I, I had to back, back to and gym. I had to back to my house. He's sleeping. Is he sleeping the gym on the mat? And wow, uh, that's story. why I put I put in my mind. I go to win and I will win this fight. That's and I called, train to win. That's called indomitable spirit. At the same time that I have fun to fight him because I'm great, I'm going as a fighter, it's not fun to fight, to fight against him. <laughs> what about in, in MMA? Like, did you have to ever have to fight against somebody that you, you really liked? Yes. And then you had to go beat the crap out of him? Yes. Who was I that? really liked uh, Musasi. Musasi. Even he he was beat me before, but I really like him. He's a really nice guy. I talk to him on social media. I still talk to him, and we had to fight because we are in the same Wait, we are in the same line in the same line. I won, he won. I was in the top, he was in the top, and UFC put me to fight against him. I have no problem. Give me your fight. Right, right. And I. And even uh, he he was beat me, uh, and I and I and I never lost twice for the same the same guy, and I knew it. I will 
come to to win the 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 the, the, the kind of fight, and I won, and I win, and I won. Was it like bittersweet beating? I I I, I smashed him a lot, I take him down, <laughs> and I choke him out. And then you told him, "I'm sorry, I love you." No, don't, mm -hmm. there's no sorry, no love. I just touch his hand, respect him, just yeah. respect himself, and get out. Okay, not in the ring. Maybe no, after. Not in the ring. No, no, after too. After that, I I I was very happy because I beat the the. Top fighters, yeah. and know? he beat you before. So yes, yes, and I bonus, and I just respect him. No, don't I? I was not not make too loud because I respect, but I was happy. Sure, who wouldn't be? I mean, you know, one of the moments that stood out for me uh, in one of your fights when you kicked um, was it Derek Brunson in the head, and you just walk over to him. You know what I'm talking about? Did you know it was over at that point? Like when you. Yes, I. So I was prepared when I come to fight. You know, I don't like to hurt and anybody, but yeah. I come to hurt. You know, yeah. when I knew it, the guy, and I know the guy will, dump. I just yeah. there's no reason to do the extra. You know, it's like a like a crazy way. When I fought against him, I knew it. They dump. I don't know why the judge the referee, leave the yeah, fight. Yeah. You no, know? when you punch him here in the, in the yes, head. Yeah. yes. The push was so strong. I felt when my you felt it. Yes. Yeah. Look at your hands, like freaking mittens over there. Yeah, man. <laughs> they look like two lunch boxes. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to get hit with those. I mean, like just doing jujitsu too over years. You know what I mean? Like it just. I mean, even my hands just like look. You know, yeah. they're not. They're yeah. always. We never have like pretty hands. <laughs> so that's the... We don't need pretty hands. No, man. no, no. Definitely not. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna show him something else. So we have the AI that asks questions that writes stuff, right? But I also have another AI here that can create images. All right, okay. so I can make an image. I can just tell it make an image of. Uh, no more question. I had some great question. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll bring we'll them back, back up. While while I'll ask you a question while this is creating an image. That's me, Kenny Kim Jiu Jitsu. That's AI made me that. Yeah, AI thinks that's you. I'm gonna I look better than that in real person. It's true. I'm going to say, imagine Screw this say, um, <laughs> Ronaldo Jacques Ray Souza, uh, let's just say with an alligator. It's going to make an image of you, man, with, a, with an alligator. We're going to see what, what happens. Yeah, always I'm beautiful. It's true. Okay, it's true. let's go. All right. That's you with a, as an alligator, with an alligator. Holding an alligator head. Look with at that. Which one, which one of those do you like? Uh, let me turn up. I think, uh, I think uh, all good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, we'll throw I think the up. first one, the right. The first one, the right, oh, the first one, the right looks cool, right? Yeah. yeah. How do you balance your training and fight preparation with your personal life? When we when we have no family, no kids, easier, you know? We just train and stay there in the gym. But when you have family, kids, everything is different, you know? Sure. Um, I, I love staying with my kids. I love, I wake up. Every day, you prepare food for my three kids oh, and wonderful. go to school, take my kids into school. That's my job. I did this every day, you know, and I love doing. Even when I come to fight, I'm a father. For me right now, I'm a father first and my fighter second. Mm -hmm. That's changed? At what point did that change? Like, when did you change seasons from being a fighter first? Uh, when you when you was fighting... The point is, you have to stay away for the girls. Stay in the bed alone, early. If you can't do it, probably you can be a champ. Also, you have to train every day. If you're young, have no excuse, I'm tired, I don't care. Just put your ass in the mat and come to train. I'm tired, I don't care, man. When the guy told you, and the guy, okay, oh, I want you to be a champ. When you're tired, you have to, at that point, you have to come to train. Yeah. I was training, I was a cup 4 a.m. 4.30, I was in the, in the pool, swimming. Nine, I'm trained, nine to 10 a.m. Two p.m. to 4 p.m. 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., I did a class for the kids, 7.30 to 9.30. I training, 
jiu-jitsu. Oh. I did this every day. And every afternoon, the 2, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., I did 1,000 judo reps, drills. I don't dry. I don't, I, I, I'm, still, I'm still alive and I was champ. That's why I was champ. Yeah. Well, I saw you know. the guys train, train like me, no more than me, never. Never. Nobody outworked you. I never see. Yeah. There's a secret. I just heard one thing. Stay away from girls. <laughs> yes. <laughs> young stay guys. Away. Seriously, young guys. Stay away for the party, for the girls. Stay in your bed early. Alone. Yeah, go to bed early. Alone. Yeah, you got to make a choice. Which right. way you want to go. Right. Exactly. Yeah. We have all, li all life to stay with your your. To stay with your Very wife, late, no? yeah. Yeah. Yep, have right. fun with your wife. It's harder. <laughs> it, it, I, I mean, uh, look, most of us <laughs> was like women, and you know, especially when you're young, you know, you feel like that's your and world. Beautiful, like me. No? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> you feel like that's the world. But, however, I think the discipline isn't there to separate them at certain times because maybe your discipline is there, but if. You know, you have your 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 uh, girlfriend or whoever at the time, like, oh, I, I gotta go train. So, no, I'll just stay here for ten more minutes for me. No, let's. You know, it's almost like the devil just kind of holding you down, and <laughs> and you know, sometimes it's hard to say no to that, yeah. right? And so I think rather than no, no girlfriend, know, man. <laughs> just yeah, straight up, train. no girlfriends, no girlfriend. If you want to be a jam, no girlfriend. Train, train, train. So when you're training for jiu-jitsu versus you're training for when you're in the UFC and you're training for an MMA fight, what are those two? What are the differences between those two? Yeah, that was different. And then for MMA, I don't train too much. Huh? Really? Yeah, really. It's a, it was easy. <laughs> so listen, listen. Listen, we come to fight jiu-jitsu. We have 10 fights. Right, back Five back, in your right. work class, five right, in, in class. your open class. open class. So you... After the fight, you had your hand. Your hands was like this dirty, <laughs> like that. Man, uh -huh. you tired. You can walk. And when you walk, you have a more tough guys to fight. Yeah, because you're going up, up the ladder, uh, the tougher and tougher and tougher yes. until you get to the finals. If I man, I did only four or five. I have six more. Man, break and then you have Hydra Gracie at the mind. end. That's why the guy, was, the, the people they stay in the gym more can win the competition because when you come to the competition, to so stay there for hours, yeah, for exactly. a long time. Yeah. yeah, you're there all day. In the school, you stay in the school for a long time. Sometimes the guy's better than you. By that, but you mentally you ready for the something. Then now the other guy don't worry. Yeah. I had a guy, they beat, they kicked me in my ass. They beat me up in the school. When I come to the competition, I bring the, the gold medal. Mm -hmm. And he done. I was very mentally. Man, it just shows you. Not only physically was he in the gym, outside the gym, working hard with no women. <laughs> but mentally, he was just, he was. Here's your golden nugget of the day. <laughs> Stay away from the ladies. Yeah, stay away, man. <laughs> so, sorry, so, sorry. <laughs> uh, so, who taught you striking when you transitioned? Or was it kind of natural? I mean, I, I, I think almost a lot. Well, I say almost, but, you know, a lot of guys know how to. No, I watched a video online and your teacher said your striking was terrible when you first started. Yes, it was terrible. But I, so I never, terrible, but he hit you. You're getting knocked down. <laughs> You're no, done. That's <laughs> the point. I had I I the guy can hit my face because I'm, I have no left hand. My arm, my left arm is is I can't straight my arm, left arm. That's why I can measure the distance. That's why the guy. Is hit that the me. arm you got broken? Yes. That's why they can hit me because I can do a so good your arm jab. Isn't okay. I can do a good jab. You know, I can I can do it. You my can arm, or you can't. I cannot do. Jab. Cannot. I cannot jab because Nautilus. my arm is don't straight like a mm, regular arm. Uh -huh. That's why the guy can't hit my face. Guys, look, jujitsu is safe, okay? <laughs> look at her finger. I was like, I can't straighten my arm out. My neck. <laughs> yes. Okay. My sometimes I can when I hit, 
Yeah, I hit for the for real. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did it take you to to get comfortable with, with striking? Never, <laughs> never. <laughs> but did you go back to like what was your game plan to go in there and strike with the guy or? You striking to set up because every, uh, everybody when they come to fight me, the guy very uh, the guy trains the bushesha, the the most world class jiu The guy held the guy how know how to defense. The guy know how to defense. Good, but yeah, no, good but double leg defense, good takedown defense. The guy yeah, but ready for fighting but MMA. You're Sosa. Yes, the guy ready. The guy when you go, the guy was like like you hit the wall. Of like, oh man, I don't want to spend my my power here because this guy don't don't want to go to the floor with me. Yeah. I want to hit. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. Sorry, man. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. We'll take it out of that part. Yeah. But hey, at least you had the power to back it up. Yes. That's. <laughs> that's right. And you trained with Anderson Silva for a while, right? Yes. I, I, what was that like? Yeah, good. I did good. Oh, uh, Anderson Silva, uh, when he fought against the guy who was strong, he uh -huh. was not did a good job, you know? He was very elusive. Yeah, you know, he's like, a, he was yeah. one of the, the best in the world. He is, he, he, he is, yeah. you know? I mean, yeah, like he's still fighting boxing. He's still yeah, he's good. Boxing. He's great. And he's he? older. He's like 47. Yeah. Yes. And he just beat some... Uh, yeah, he's good. He's good. He's and, great. I, know, I forgot who it was in boxer that he was Yeah, fighting. he's good. He's great. Jake Paul. <laughs> ah, sometimes it's happened. He's 40, 46 No, I know. Now. He's, yeah. he's old enough to be Jake his... Jake Paul is a kid. Dad. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's old enough to be no. his son. It's normal. He's amazing. Yeah, he's good. He, he trained with the old class boxing. He's not... He's not no, he did Muay Thai, he boxing, yeah, yeah all he, that. He's, he did he's, everything. He he's, did. Uh, he's a very talented. Did you learn a lot from him, watching him, training with him? No. Okay. Who did you learn the most from, do you think? I was loved to watch uh, about Jiu-Jitsu. No, about Jiu-Jitsu or MMA. I was loved to watch Nino Chambri fight. I don't know who that is. Nino Chambri is a... Brazilian one, guy? He's Brazilian guy. He's one of the most incredible Jiu-Jitsu for me. He beat uh, Margarita, Margarita, Margarita. He was incredible. He he did, he have incredible techniques. You no, know? look him up. He started with the the, the Gogo Plata. Oh. He's he started with this kind of technique. You know, yeah, he's good. He's good. I, I like to watch him. You know, when I was young and I started Jiu Jitsu, I watch, I watch watch him a lot. You no, know? he's which, really which team. Um... Were you competing for it? I was. I was living in Manaus, and I trained jiu-jitsu and judo with Henrique Machado. Okay. He's, 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 one, he's my coach. He was my coach for the white belt, the black belt. I had only one coach. Mm. And uh, when I came to Rio de Janeiro, I competed with the Osvaldo Alves. Okay. What team is that? Osvaldo Alves. Uh, Osvaldo, okay. He's okay. a grandmaster. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. A, so that's the only te two teams you competed for? I compete with the sometimes later the Osvaldo Alves and Grace Barra will move stay together. Okay, I, okay. I compete for Grace Barra too, but I I came from Manaus, you know? Okay. All right, so Jacare. So this is the Matt Made podcast and what we're doing with Matt Made is we're we're going around the world really and we're telling stories about how jujitsu changes people's lives. And we've got now a uh, hundred short stories. We've been to Orlando and recorded with Laborio and we've been to Nashville. We've been all over and we've heard people. Now people are coming on on the, our site and filming with their phone and telling us these stories about how jujitsu saved their life. I mean, from car accidents, hospitals, alcohol, drugs, recovery, abuse, abuse. I mean, everything we have. We have stories um, that you you would believe because you hear those. But. What are some of the stories of it could be your student or friend or that you've seen where jujitsu has really my students yeah. or anybody or even yeah. you for that matter? Yeah, yeah but I have a student, uh, that girl, they they let they they they, they, they build her confidence. He was shy, he, she didn't talk to anybody right now. He have no problem, he leave, he don't go to my to more to, to psychologist. He, she, she don't go more for the therapist. It's from each song. It's amazing, you know. Change her. I change her life. Jiu no, I know. Jiu-Jitsu changed her life. You know. Also, make me happy and change my life too. Right. So imagine if you didn't train Jiu-Jitsu. I mean, where would you be? 
Would you still be in Manaus, you think? Uh, I, I, I don't like to think about it. It's so strange for me, you know? I can't, I can't imagine it. Yeah. Well, I guess the crazy thing it, like the crazy thing like this. It's been your life, you know. <laughs> yes, this has been your life. I started when I was 17, you know. And uh, when I started jiu-jitsu, I left. I left everything bad from my life. When I started, I left everything bad from my life. And in second week, I moved inside the school, and I stayed there. How long did you live in the school? Yeah, I'm starting in 97, 99, 98, 97, end of 97, after my board birthday, and stayed there after 2005. No, after I was, so you I think 2000. You that long? Yeah, I was living the, in the match for that long. I was cleaning the G every day. No, that's why nobody cleaned my, my school. I cleaned my school. Wow, that's pride right there. Man, that, that had a little, mm, I, I felt that right there because I, I um, when I first started my school, uh, I actually talked about this in another podcast, but I, I, li I, I lived in the gym for a month, which is a long time, <laughs> not compared to like 10 years or whatever <laughs> this is, but, yeah. you know, and I had uh, like only one meal a day which was a bowl of rice next door at the Chinese restaurant for a dollar. And I split it in half and I have some for lunch and for dinner. But I mean, he's like a world champion and still cleaning the gym and he still cleans it till this day. I mean, that's taking pride in your work. Yeah, my, and, wife, you know. my, I, I think my wife don't like too much, but I said, but I love it. Make me happy. I like to do it because I clean a lot of the gyms. No, it's no, it was not my gym. And I was there and clean every day. Now That's my you. school. Yeah, I you. work hard to build it. You when the guy, the people came here and seen me out, all the every every cleaning say, okay, it's clean. No, it was super <laughs> clean when I was there. It smelled good. That's the first thing I said. Actually, if you go back to the Instagram reel we posted, it, says, it smells clean. That's one of the first things that I tell school owners: make sure your school is clean. That's the first sign of like, okay, is the school legit? I don't care how good your technique is, man. If your mats are dirty, it stinks in there. That's that's a bad sign. I don't know. Maybe in Brazil, you know, when things aren't, but here, like everything needs to be, you know, super clean. And that's the first thing I say when I walked into that gym at, at Dr. Ray's in, in Macaulay, Florida. I said, "Man, you smell that? Nothing. It smells super good in here." And he was super proud of that. No, let me show you what I did. I painted over here. He was taking me yeah, around. Yeah, I, I did everything. So I put proud. the match. I put the match. I, I, I built him. I built my match for a long. Yeah, he cut it and you know angled. He cut the match. He cut the angle. Cut it. Did everything. I love it. Yeah, it was. Uh, I'm a hands on. No, that's why it's probably going to be even more successful going forward. Because it's it's. I mean, just in the past two months since I've been there, I'm seeing. I'm following his uh, um, school page. Obviously, you guys can follow Jacare Souza, but. The, the Jacare Martial Arts on Instagram, if you guys follow that, you'll see the progress, like, from, the you know, classes being smaller to now, like, classes getting bigger and, you know, the kids having fun. And it's it's, it's incredible to see the, the journey, incredible to see the success you're making, not only, uh, you know, on the mats like you did, but going forward being a, now being an entrepreneur, a businessman, and being a good, you know, coach and a professor, um, you know, leading the next generation, especially as you talked about teaching them the, the values of martial arts, the respect, you know, giving them the confidence. Um, and this this is the kind of leaders that we're looking for, you know, Thank not, you, not just in our martial arts community, but I think in, in general, those are the kind of people that we need. We need role models for people to, you know, for the next generation of kids to look up. Uh, to learn the values like that, not to teach them that's something senseless. Because you can teach them all the, the greatest jujitsu there is. You know, this is the, the best technique and make them a champion. But if they're bad people and they don't have core values, then, you know, they're, they're not the people that we want in our society. Yeah. Right? Because I was a bad kid because nobody taught me. Obviously, my parents were there. They, they tried, um, but they were all too busy working, as we talked about. And so, but, you know, me being in martial arts all my life, it always brought me back. It always, you know, you know, grounding me back to where I was and, you know, uh, um, staying in it for a long time. And now that I realize, you know, like, you got to be a that, good person. That's why we are here. Right, exactly. And it brings <laughs> people together. And hopefully, 
you know, this podcast, the vlog that we're doing, all the Matt made episodes, the, the, the kids that you're teaching, hopefully when people see this, this is the, the positive message. This is uh, uh, something that's going to inspire them to be a better versions of themselves. And yeah. I always say this on and off yes. the mats, you know, like what we learn on the mats is uh, uh, something incredible. Like, you know, when people ask, what are the benefits of jujitsu? You know, we talked about this. You know, sometimes we list it on our website, like, you know, for kids, build their confidence, you know, respect. But it's so hard to just um, explain that. It's, 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 it's a feeling more than, you know, something that you just tell people, right? You can't just read about it and be like, okay, cool. That's what I'm going to get. When you see it's different. Right. When you feel it in your bones and your yes. body. Oh. And some people don't have the patience to stick around. Yeah. Some people are just like, okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna I, I, immediate gratification, like jump to this, this, this. I'm gonna try this. I'm gonna try this. And people who trust the process and stay in it, two, three, four, five years, is something that's gonna be life changing, right? And they'll they'll never they'll never leave. Even if they do for a short period of time, they're always gonna make their way back. You know, it's like you know, uh, like a kid. You know, like he may go somewhere, but he's always gonna probably come back home. Home is always where a place they're gonna come back home, and that's you know uh, what we're doing. But you guys are you guys are using jujitsu to change the next generation of kids, right? Because somebody somebody took you and poured into you from your brother, you know, uh, at this gym, yes. and took one guy out and and believed in you, sponsored you, right? So you could train in the gym, and now look, now you're taking you circle. eighty kids, ninety kids, a hundred kids at your gym right now that you're changing their lives, right? Yeah. Same thing with you. Yeah. Not, it's not just, I mean, kids, yeah, but even grown adults that are yeah, in their 50s, adult, 60s, yeah. people that are having trouble. I mean, they may be so successful in life that they have, you know, the best cars, live in the, uh, the, the most expensive house, and they're taking all these trips, but, like, mentally, they're not happy. Like, or physically, yeah. they're overweight. You know what I mean? They, they, they just don't have an outlet. And then they start training, and they're like, this is the best thing I can do. And, you know, the greatest thing about uh, training on the mats, I always say this, is a great equalizer. It's it's um, it takes the levels away. What I mean by that is like in society we have statuses. Yeah, this person's a millionaire. This person's a CEO. This person's a doctor. This person, whatever, right? And so he may pull up in a, a nice car with a nice watch. You know, dressed. He's a musician, whatnot. Like, and then you have a guy that may be, oh, he just works for, you know, he's a you know, nine to five guy. He works at a bank. He makes thirty thousand dollars a month. Whoever the person is, there's levels, right? But when you step on the mat, oh, everybody takes the their clothes off, whether it's a scrub, uniform, and we put on the geese. Everybody's very like it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's we're the it's same. Amazing. We're the same. And yeah. I, I, let me tell you the story. This is so funny. So I had a childhood friend of mine. He, he trained with me. Uh, he's married now. He's, he's kind of busy. I think he's coming back. Anyway, he trained me with me for a very long time. He got his purple belt under me. So uh, he worked as like a handyman. You know, he had a truck that was like breaking down all the time. He Financially, he wasn't that well off. And I would have him work for me a little bit in my parents' house. Hey, can you fix this drywall? Like I would give him, you know, odd jobs and, you know, whatnot to help him out. Anyways, one day... I was out and I seen him with his girlfriend or wife at the time. And one of my private lesson students, who's a black belt, he's been training like 15 years with me. He's the head oncologist doctor, cancer doctor for our local hospital. They were out like in a double date at a local restaurant. And I'm like, hold on. I'm not even there. How are they friends? And I go up to them, you know, they're both my students and friends. I'm like, hey, what are you guys doing? It's like, yeah, we're just catching up, having a great time. So what I'm trying to say is you would never see a head oncologist, the doctor, and a handyman become friends outside of the jujitsu mat. Yes. You see what I mean? So all of the 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 the, the um, unnecessary stuff was out. It was like they basically were friends because they enjoy their company. Man, he's a great training but He's a great guy. He's going to come come work for me. Now we're making more connections. You see? And I think that's the beauty of stepping on the mats. All of that uh, pretentious stuff is gone. Mm. We, we don't measure each other by what you drive or who you are as a status or, you know, what kind yeah. of, you know, 
Like I remember my story, my history because I, I was living the, inside the gym, and uh, the friend of mine pick up me on the gym and leave me to to to, to the the fences restaurant when I was a kid, and uh, and not only one and two like a ten person when I when I. When I vacation, when I watch, when I go to my house with my family, I saw for my wife, hey, those guys take care. Of, he wants to care about me. He 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 gave me food. He gave me food. And my wife said, why everybody gave you food for you? For I don't know. They like <laughs> they love me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I go to my house, I talk to everybody. Oh, that those guys give food for me. They give me to 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 eat in some wow. lot of restaurant. It's no one. It's a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> a lot of friends. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the community. Yeah. <laughs> that's the community. It's, it's, uh, that's why I say it yeah. brings people together. Yeah. I remember me when I talked about it, about it. I was in, uh, I was, I was living inside the gym. The guy come, come, come there to, and the guy, oh, Jokore, can you teach me some techniques? Oh, yes, I can teach you. And I teach, I teach te some techniques. They gave me one, one like a one and a half, one dollar. Uh -huh. I cross the street and buy one, 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 one acai for acai. me. Yes, <laughs> acai guys, yeah, you heard it. it. He ate acai. That's why uh, his jujitsu became so yeah, good. Yeah, one, one class to acai buy one Jesus. acai. <laughs> one class to buy one acai for me was amazing thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can, I can, <laughs> I have money, one dollars. Man, the community. That's that's what yeah. we're talking about, and that's again, hopefully these, you know podcast interviews and you know um the videos we put out will inspire someone out there to you know try jujitsu and fall in love with it and help you know stay on course and you know let this be like a a, a rolling effect and help people yeah you know i got one last question for me for you so if you could go back now 30 years later and talk to 17 year old jacare with all your experience and wisdom now, what would you tell him? What would you do different? What would you tell him? Uh, I don't know. I just, uh, I, so I had, I had no family. I have no, I had no, I was, again, I, 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 I didn't talk with, I do not talk with my old brothers. I have only jiu-jitsu, you know? That's why I think that's why I train a lot because I, I don't have place to go, and uh, and I had only jujitsu. You know, I think it said for me try train more, rest more. Wow. <laughs> but I, I sometimes I I did something wrong because sometimes don't sleep well, yeah. sometimes I don't train well. But uh, if I talk to me, so. Let uh, rest more, train more, both. Try more. <laughs> yes, I don't think so. Well, no. What's what's Ronaldo Jacare's next move? What's yeah. next for you? Like, yeah, is this it? Like I just, you know, like obviously you you have a beautiful family. You're in Orlando. You got your academy. Are you going to be teaching more seminars? Can we set that up for you? Are you going to be? I asked you earlier. Uh, would you ever consider competing again, maybe like at a super fight? So what's next for Ronaldo Jacare? Yeah, right now I need to care about my family and my school. Okay. That's my main goal. But I have, I try another thing to do it, like uh, another work or, or do uh, some seminar too, you know? I, I just because think I, about yeah. my family and work. It's still yeah. the same. It's still the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, those of you that are, uh, interested school owners, if you're watching this and you would like to have Jacare for a seminar, you can reach out to me or you can reach out to him directly. Um, uh, whichever is easier for you. Uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll put some information on the bottom of the podcast. Oh, thank you. That's that cool. way they can be in touch with you. Uh, but it would be an honor for them to, you know, have you, but yeah, I think, um, yeah, we want to wrap it up. Fuji mats. Look, I know you guys can see, but we're actually on the mats. The best mats out there. I have it. My entire gym, 5,000 square feet of um, gym is uh, redone with uh, Fuji mats. Same thing with Jacare's gym. Probably the best. I uh, I can't say anything, you know, bad about it. I mean, it, no. customer service, quality. I mean, it's it's, it's by far the best. Uh, so anyways, uh, guys, 
first episode of the Matt May Show on the mat with your host, Kenny Kim, and our special guest, Ronaldo Jacare. Appreciate you being here with us today. And, uh, you. you know, uh, until next time, we're checking out. Everybody, I'm going to give him the oos. <laughs> That's it, guys. All right. Amazing. Man. Thank you, man.